they probably assume that I listen to rap music and eat chicken and watermelon, you feel me? My family make me to come to because uh, to have a, a better life, yeah. so we can work. Men fleeing war mm. take their women and kids. Mm. Men going to war go alone or in large groups. We need to use common sense and stop being pussies and scared of speaking the truth. When Ugandan dictator Idi Amin expelled the country's Asian population, Leicester City Council ran a campaign advising them not to come to Leicester. 50 years later, Leicester is the first UK city with a majority non-white population, with just 41% of the city identifying as white. Given the current political discourse around immigration, refugees and migrants in the UK, F off back to France. I've come to Leicester to find out how are you feeling about immigration at the moment? Well, I'll, I'll say what I think. And I'm not a racist, but I'm a realist. Mm. Right? Mm. I'll speak up. Back in the old days, 1066, right, yeah, when the Normans landed, was that called an invasion, yeah? My, my, my life was very hard, you know, because my dad, he, 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 leave, he leave me alone. Mm. So I'd be growing up alone, you know? Yeah. I came to Europe when I was young, when I was, was, uh, I was like seven years old. Mm. You know, but immigration, I think, is good to help people. When um, the Vikings landed, military aged men, they called it an invasion when I was at school. What made you and your family come to Europe and then the UK? My family made me to come to because uh, to have a, a better life, yeah. so we can work, yeah. so we can, you know, we can have the rights in this, in, in this country. But every people need to work for the food, mm. for the money, mm. you understand? Yeah. And when the Allies landed on the beaches of Normandy, mm. D-Day, that, that was the invasion, wasn't it? Mm. So you tell me the difference. What do people in Belgium think about the UK? They don't know how to pronounce uh, a bottle of water. They all say, "boat of water. Is, it, is the difference not, it's an army, versus like the Normans were an army, the Vikings were an army. They were, but, they were armies, weren't they? Yeah. Invading armies. But that, that is, it's really, that's the difference. Well, what you call military aged men. I'm, I'm a military aged okay, man. Okay, fine, not a problem. I think that unless, if you've lived somewhere, you don't really know the privilege that we have in this country, like, you know, uh, getting access to free healthcare, going to schools, educating ourselves, having a job. I think people maybe might not understand that this is something that we have every day, but for somebody else, that's something they aspire to have. And unless people are understanding that, it can be very difficult for them to maybe emphasise with other people. The way the government talks about people immigrating or kind of travelling in small boats across the English Channel, I think they use quite a dehumanising, kind of like racist language about these people. Can, when you hear that, how does that make you guys feel? I think it's quite upsetting, to be fair. Because especially for such a diverse, even like cities like Leicester, mm. such a diverse place. You've got places like Narborough Road, you've got every culture down on that road. Even in the city centre, you see you know, people all religions, faiths, all kinds of things. It's just, a, it's just a bit upsetting that for a place that's so diverse, their views on diverse people. So yeah, it's just a bit upsetting. Men fleeing war mm. take their women and kids. Mm. Men going to war go alone or in large groups. Yeah? We need to use common sense and stop being pussies and scared of speaking the truth. I believe they're there because when they try and enforce 15 minute cities, mm -hmm. they're gonna be used when they try and enforce more lockdowns Right, yeah? I don't know what your views are, guys, but I'm yeah, yeah. definitely part of the resistance, all right, yeah, mm. in this country. Uh -huh. um, I believe they're going to be used against the people, and this will be not just here, it'll be in Ireland and elsewhere, mm. to enforce what the powers that shouldn't be are trying to do to you and me, the government. Mm. Government means uh, uh, control, meant means mind. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have uh, too many sheep walking around who are too happy to do as they're told and will always trust the government like they're their mummy and daddy. And that's not the case. There's a definite Agenda 21 stroke 30 plan going on, the Great Reset, central bank digital currency, cashless society, living in 15 minute cities, ghettos. I have to work hard, I have to, you know, make myself look a certain way. Because, I mean, as you see me right now, a lot of people will see the way that I'm dressed right now and assume certain things about me. A lot of people probably wouldn't know that I'm studying computer science, trying to go into software engineering. They probably assume that I listen to rap music and eat chicken and watermelon, you feel me? How do you feel about immigration at the moment? How do I feel? 
Well, it's, uh, it's a problem, isn't it? It's getting worse, you know. I live on the Golden Mile. It, I don't know whether you've heard of it. No, no it's called the Golden Mile. It's all ethnic and, yeah, and that's... Um, but I live there, so it's changes there, you know. It's unreal, mm. you know. But nothing you can do, is, so. is, that, is it? Do you, think, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Do you think it's a neutral thing? It, it, it is good, and it's, but it's just the amount that they're letting in, especially where I live. I see it, mm. you know, because that's where they all go ahead for. Yeah, man, I, I think it, I'm fine with it. I say I'm fine with it, right? Hey, I would be, I would be doing the same in their boat, you know what I mean? I would be, man, you're human beings, you're survival of the fittest. If that's what, if that's what coming here means, then yeah, all for it, bro. Yeah. I'm pretty more, yeah, I want the best for everyone. So I've had a good start. I've been fortunate to be raised in a good household. So. I want the best for everyone else in that perspective, I guess. In the immigration, I don't give a fuck about the immigration. Every single people they have to have the rights in this in, in this uh, in this UK. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because the people uh, maybe they, they they make a trouble and they, they deport them back to home. You know, but they need to have a second chance. Mm -hmm. You know, because every people want to, some people with family don't have no money, so food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So every people want to to, to deserve yeah. the chance. Yeah. yeah, I came in the UK in the year 1980. Where, where did you come from? I come from Africa. Where did you? Why did you want to come to the UK? Uh, you know, because we had a British passport. Oh, cool. when, when I was born there, at that time, British, British rule over there. So we were British anyway. So when we came here, we stayed here for uh, five years and we, 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 we became British citizen. What do you make of the way the government talks about immigration at the moment? <sighs> well, talk about it, but there's not much done, is there? We could talk about it till, you know, but... Nothing you can do it, so. Do you have a strong opinion about the government at the moment? Yeah, I what's, do. What's the opinion? I can't say it. Have a go. What the government is doing is doing right for us, so nothing more I can say because the government is government. And you know, British government is number one mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So they, what they do is very good. Excellent. Yeah. What do you, what do you think of Rishi Sunak? Oh, he's the best man. He's second Modi, I can say. He can be his second Modi. How does it feel, then, Saya, when people, when you hear the, the language used around, or people crossing the channel on a small boat, the kind of the rhetoric that the government uses, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, it makes me, you know, of course, feel sad. Like, at the end of the day, I am a human being. Mm. You know, I mean, our luxury is that we can go to another country, we can hire, like, a little, uh, you know, life-size ring boat, whatever it's called, like an inflatable one, and sit there, right? But it's it takes, like... It's a, it's a privilege to have when you can like go to another country, go for a holiday. But it does make me feel sad because these are human lives at the end of the day. Like I am a human, you are a human. Human. When I hear stories about that, and I'm putting myself in that situation. I'm like, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. But people are doing it for a reason because they want to live a better life. Mm. So of course it does make me feel sad and it makes me feel emotional. Mm. And uh, and sometimes you feel helpless because you feel like, what can I do about it as well? Yeah. You can literally walk up the road, there are people that are Muslim, people that are Hindu, people that are Sikhs, people from all different ethnicities, all different ra uh, races, and that's what makes Leicester unique. And you don't you feel... Know, you notice it sometimes when you go to other cities within the UK, <laughs> don't you? I think, because I've always lived in Leicester for, well, but yeah, well, sometimes when you go to other cities within the UK, you think, oh, okay, not everywhere is as, as diverse as Leicester is, but yeah. yeah.